<laughs> take over and merge now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm driving. I'm driving. I'm not driving anymore. It's all you. We're here in beautiful Beijing, China, and today we have the Neo ES7. Now, we're going to be test driving two of the really cool features that Neo has, which is the battery swap and the autonomous driving system. And I'm super excited to check these out. We have the premium model of the ES7 today. That is the dual motor, 650 horsepower with a range of 575 kilometers. The premium model will run you about 548,000 RMB. That is 80,000 USD. The base model is just 468 or a light 68,000 USD. Previously, we did a video on the ET5 and we did a full review on that. So today we're just gonna focus on two of those main features. So I we've input a, an address here and I don't know which lane it's gonna choose. I, I we've never driven, I've never driven this way before, but it's gotta make a bunch of decisions. We got cars on the right, cars on the left, and there were multiple cars merging at the same time. A very complicated scenario that even I, when I'm driving, don't enjoy doing. Uh, right now, right now we're merging onto the lane, the main road. Uh, okay, it said take over and merge now. I guess I'm taking over. Wow, it did not want to merge. Okay, that's a, that's fine. A little terrifying. So, NOP is activated. The navigation on pilot is activated. But now we have to leave the main road again. So we're going to do another lane change. It's checking. There's a car right back there. So it's got to merge and it's got to figure out a way how to get around this truck. Can it do it? It, it can't. It can't. It doesn't know what to do. It's gonna, I think it's decided this car is better to pull in front of, but we should be changing lanes. Yep, there we go. Now we're doing a lane change. That was perfect. That made a good decision. So the van was following the other car a little too closely. So it went in front of the other car to find space. Good job. Now we're going to get off the highway right here. So here we go. It says you're entering the ramp. It's like, it, it feels like having a side seat driver who's just reaching over and grabbing the wheel, but it's like, they still want you to drive, but like, they definitely want to be in control. <laughs> like the worst side seat driver ever. I love it. It drives like really aggressively. I'm surprised with how aggressive it's driving. Like it is definitely trying to get ahead of cars. Like for, there was a car ahead, ahead of us and it just went around it overtaking overtaking that's awesome all right i'm really impressed with how seamless it feels like we're following the other cars when a car is in front of us where one car one one once one lane is going faster than the other it you know it makes the new york taxi driver decision go, gets in the fast lane as soon as it can i should say the beijing dd driver no one drives as crazy as the taxis do here. All right, so we are by Solana, one of the massive, uh, very, very nice shopping places near Solana. I'm, I'm, we're coming up on a crosswalk right here, so people are crossing the street. What's the car gonna do? The car is going to run people over. Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> All right, so right now the car is making decisions for itself. It is tracking the lane. I have my hands, uh, you, you have to keep your hand on the wheel. That is what is legal right now. Um, and then we're coming up on some brake lights. Let's see what the car does. The car is braking just like it should be. Okay, good, thank you. Inside of the fifth ring, you can't use some of the extended features for the level two autonomous driving. So in the city driving, the autonomous driving for braking and spacing is good. But as far as like it, intuitively knowing which lane to be in and things like that it does not as far as it is as far as the car knowing which lane it should be in i think it has some issues there um and definitely definitely not definitely not something that i think is a really 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 a, a great feature at this time but it's good it works after driving the ES7, we're going to start with the autonomous driving system. Getting on and off the highway was a breeze. However, there was a little bit of uh, when you're merging, the vehicle says, okay, 
we're doing autonomous driving, but during the merge part where you're actually changing lanes into traffic, you're going to have to handle this. So there's a learning curve with using the autonomous driving system. You do have to be alert and paying attention to wait for those transitions when the vehicle switches from the vehicle driving to you controlling the vehicle. The driving in traffic is definitely something that is wonderful to use. However, it still needs a little bit of work. Your car distance from one car to the next is still a little long. So sometimes cars will pull in front of you, which is a little, you know, not comfortable. If there was a human driver, the braking and the changing lanes features work seamlessly. And I really liked it. And driving in the US or in Europe, I know the roads aren't quite so crowded. So I think this will be a more comfortable experience for drivers that are on less crowded roads. So we're gonna take a look at the battery swap. Um, we're actually right beside the battery swap station, but you can do this while you're on the road. You hit this button here, it's going to search. And of course it found the battery swap station that is right near us. Uh, there's two here. Uh, so we're gonna choose this one because this one has batteries that are available. So there's five batteries, two people waiting, and we're gonna hit order now. Order request sent and we are in line. This is so cool. I really think this is a great feature where the car is parking itself. It's like going to the car wash where like your car gets put in that thing and then you go straight through it. Except for this one, you're getting a new battery. Like no charge time, no nothing. This is almost as good as the Jetsons flying car. Okay, not quite, but yeah, you just sit in the car. It does it all for you. You go back in here. It's the, these, these things are going to move your car, center it exactly where it needs to go. That is so cool. Feels, feels relatively safe. I don't feel unsafe at any point. And then the sounds are, it sounds like you're in an airplane that's about to take off. Much like the Jetsons. So right now the car is moving a little bit to the right. So it's centering the car. Now we're just waiting the batteries in. We're waiting for the battery to start up. Power swap complete. Current battery level 92%. Fantastic. And we are good to go. Battery swapping in the Neo car is quick. It's convenient. However, there is a network effect to battery charging stations. The more people who use them, the more they will be available, the more convenient they get. Uh, they are currently not all that convenient. Uh, today we had to wait about 20, 30 minutes to get a charge. We did go to one of the most popular places in Beijing, the Solana Mall in Chaoyang. So battery swapping definitely has some pros and some cons. Um, there are currently two companies in China and Ample in San Francisco who's working with Uber who are doing battery swaps. Tesla tried doing battery swaps. They couldn't really find the budget for it. I think the biggest thing with, ba with battery swaps that's an advantage is um, Any time that you have a vehicle that needs to be out on the road quickly, so taxis or car hailing or, you know, you're renting cars to people and the customers have like a short turnaround time, that makes car, ba car battery swapping really, really, really amazing and necessary and scaling well. However, for consumer use, there is a little bit of a drawback with uh, potential waiting times and the need to have an actual station with batteries available um, for the number of cars that will need to change. And I think that can, that can find some difficulties in scaling. Thanks so much for watching. And if you wanna learn more about cars in China, please put what cars you would like to learn about in the comments below, or just any thoughts you have in general. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.